as of right now financially and some possible uh, actions and directions that can be taken this will be about a 15 20 minute uh, presentation yes mayor it will take your time this is quite important and hopefully the people at home can follow along when they're in bed over the next week great thank you <laughs> Good morning, Mayor and City Council, Nancy Carey. Uh, this is not often you get to come to Council with not just good news, but a true moment in time to take a moment to look back and say, how did we get where we were? Not because we're in a crisis. That's not why we're looking back, to look for mistakes that were made or problems that we had and we need to solve a big problem. We're actually going to take a moment to look back to look at how did we get to such incredibly great news in such a short amount of time. In your staff report and packet today, the report is about a net positive cash flow of over a million dollars. It wasn't very long ago when our expenses exceeded our revenues into the multi-million dollars. How did we make this kind of transformation? So we're going to take a moment and look at that so we can learn from those choices that we made and make sure that we stay the course. Overall, our fiscal health, if we were doing a state of the city as uh, Councilmember Thomas did just, Davis did just a few weeks ago, the fiscal health is good. It's not just good, but it's improved. Our year end that occurred September 30th, it takes us a few months to put all those numbers together. That is the purpose of this staff report, both in the quarterly report that was on your consent agenda and the purpose of this staff report. Our net fund balance is $1.2 million, just about. Our current general fund is balanced. Not only that, but in 2013, we have achieved a $20 million improvement for the community. $14.5 million came from a reduction in our long-term liabilities. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But how did we transform this organization and our fiscal outlook? We did so through leadership, prudent decisions, and careful choices. Reviewing the decisions that transformed this organization provides an opportunity to evaluate that decision-making process. There's a lot of information on this slide, so I'm not going to read every word, but we're going to look at this slide a couple of times. And we're going to start, we're going to look at the whole years from 2002 to 2014. And we're going to start looking at in 2002 to 2007, the period of years where things were on the rise. What was going on in the economy? That's the top row. City revenues, city expenses, city reserves, and community infrastructure. It's important to see what were we doing during those boom years, as we often call them. Of course, we know that the housing um, market was on the rise and on the rise fast. Many people said, warning, uh, there's something that that can't continue. Um, but it was a big period of growth in the dollar value. That provided a lot of revenues for the city. Over $16.8 million just during these years was in positive cash flow and a heavy reliance on property taxes, as all local governments do and governments. We rely on that primary revenue source of property taxes. And although property taxes haven't increased very much over the last 20 or 30 years, obviously as a result of Prop 13, because the price of houses was increasing, we were seeing additional revenues. But the city's expenses were also increasing significantly. Each of the last couple of budget messages I've given you, I've said I've taken a look at the last 30, 40 years of budgeting to see how were those expenses dedicated and why were they rising so fast outside of just personnel? Where was it going? What were the investments being made? What the city was doing in 2002 to 2007 was creating a lot of new services, such as an economic development team. It's a good idea. When you're seeing a boom and you have some money, you want to invest in the economy. Um, what was going on in the reserves? This is the most, I've said it many times, I'm going to keep saying it, the most single, significant, amazing, positive thing the city did was to take the reserves, which were zero, literally nothing, in 2003, and by 2007, they were at $14 million. 
If we take a look back even further, when the, in 1978 the city's reserves were 50 percent of the general fund. By 1991 or so, it was down to about 21 percent of the general fund. From 2007 to today, in spite of everything that's happened, we have maintained our general fund reserves at that threshold you've set of 25 percent. In 1990, when it reached 20 percent, people were worried but uh, because it had fallen from 50 percent. But what you did in 2002-3 to go from zero to 14 million set us on a course to be able to survive the recession. A, a great crystal ball. If anyone had one, that was the right thing to do. What was going on in the infrastructure, we relied primarily on federal and state grants. This community happens to benefit significantly from getting a lot of money from outside the basin that comes in to protect the lake. But of course, in 2008 and between 2008 and 2010, during the greatest recession of most of our lives, the government was slow to respond. Not just our city, but all the governments, because normally government helps to prop up the economy during a modest recession because our revenues on property taxes lag behind the impact to the private economy. And that's what happened here. Between 2008 and 2010, although property taxes were flat in 08, between 09 and 2010, they were declining sharply, quickly, faster than any cuts that could be made. The economic future was uncertain. Although the reserves maintained that threshold, they were being utilized to balance the budget. And we, again, on infrastructure, were really not investing in infrastructure. We were relying on grants. So what happened in 2010? What was the outlook? What did the city say we were projecting forward as to what was going to happen in the next few years? We knew that the economy was not just slowly recovering. We weren't sure it was going to recover. And so although our revenues had declined sharply, we didn't have a course of action on how we were going to solve our structural deficit. And our healthy reserves were being utilized so quickly they were seriously at risk. And our infrastructure wasn't being invested in because we didn't have the money to do so. In 2010, the budget message presented a very grim forecast. This is the actual um, chart from that budget, mes budget message. And you can see at the table on the bottom, in 2008, we had seen a negative cash flow of over a million dollars. 2009, we were at near two million dollars. And the budget message for 2010 said, we're at three million. We're at three million dollars and falling fast. Something needed to be changed. We had a structural deficit that needed fixing. The recommendations including cost containment measures using reserves, furloughs, early retirements, and frozen positions. Some of those were good strategies. Obviously, you had a lot of additional reserves. Again, we weren't really sure how long this recovery was going to take, if it was going to take, when it was going to really get a kickstart and get moving in the right direction. The budget message was a warning shot. In fact, it's very similar to a message we had some time back. And I'm just going to read that from the budget message. California cities are facing their greatest fiscal challenge since the aftermath of Prop 13 in the late 70s. Multi-billion dollar state budget deficit coupled with economic recession have caused state lawmakers to scramble for new revenues and create ways to pass off their expenses to lower levels of government. We've certainly heard that. Some of the other messages in the budget says we've held, down, we've held town forums to build a vision for the future, determine how to achieve it. Out of that came clear consensus of a more efficient transportation, economic vitality, affordable housing, developing a community identity. South Lake Tahoe responded to these issues and the recession by reducing expenses across the board, hiring free, suspended capital outlay. Any guess when that budget, budget message was? That's actually from 1991. 23 years ago, we said the same thing. We are facing a crisis. We need to solve the problem. And the answer was to cut everywhere we could. And over the years during the boom years, we built a lot of services back up because demand from the public becomes high. They need to get things done. They want us to help them. Uh, my message in the last couple of budget messages has been, as we see revenues increase, we must look back and see why are we in this cyclical, hire more staff, and then cut them in a recession. It's traumatic. It's difficult. 
and in 2010 we were facing the same decision. So in 2011, that was enough of that, changed course of direction. The city faced the economic realities head on. It was difficult. Some of you on the council at the time, this council room was packed wall to wall with families whose lives were being changed. We also said though, let's take a look and go to the community and find out. Let's see what they think we should do. And they said, operate like a business, invest in the infrastructure, be strategic and develop a plan. And you did that. We set our course to say we must be more prudent in our decisions. We're going to have to be, make some very, very difficult decisions, but also invest in the infrastructure. At the same time, we decided to cut. That was what we had to do. We decided to go ahead and invest in the infrastructure significantly, reorganized the city completely, eliminated positions, and reduced our budget deficitly. <laughs> reduced our budget deficit significantly. At the same time, we got no help from the state of California. Governor Brown dissolved redevelopment swiftly. This was a swift action of law that had been in place for over 30, 40 years. That impacted us significantly. We started to see, though, these were the right decisions, and we stayed the course in 2012. And on top of that, you took the courageous action of issuing $5 million of certificates of participation. And those have been set aside for the Harrison Project. You just saw the completion of the Linear Park Project. $3.5 million went to that infrastructure that we had long delayed. Employees also stepped up and they said, we're going to be partners to this solution. You don't see that in very many cities today. Cities across this country, and particularly California, are in court. Some are facing bankruptcy because the city said they didn't want to, the employees didn't want to face the issue. They didn't want to realize the realities that we had to come to terms with. And instead, they fought their employer. Our, our employees didn't do that. They stepped up to the plate and said, we want to be your partners. We understand it's a problem. And it's a big change to reduce their benefits and all the salary cuts that they did. We also developed a shared community vision. Much like back in 1991, the community came together. And often, crisis will do that. What we need to learn from is to say, we've come together. We've developed a shared vision on recreation as our opportunity. Let's stay the course and get it done. The budget deficits were eliminated, and our economic forecast, though, however, remained uncertain. Oh, there was one thing I wanted to comment. I apologize. At the very bottom of the slide there, it should be noted that 30 percent of our workforce is gone. That's not a small number. Many cities reduced their workforce by 10 percent, 15, 12 percent. That's pretty significant. One third doesn't work here and we're still delivering the services. The, that is why as revenues increase, it's very common for cities then to go back to what they did before because we know what's missing. We know that we have services we're not able to perform. Staff is doing an analysis right now of all of their concerns within each department, so we're prepared for your financial workshop in February. But one of the things that we're hearing from staff is we're concerned that something might slip through the cracks. We're worried. Um, when we bring back staff now, we're going to be recommending those are only for things that will help improve the economy. Our permit center has seen double the amount of permits they've had. That's a very good sign, so we don't want to hold back the economy. That's a position to get back in the budget. Positions to improve, um, inspect buildings, that's an important position. But other positions that really don't have an impact on the community are not going to be recommended in this management. So what was 2013 after a lot of cuts? Uh, we stabilized the budget and we have balanced it for the first time in five years without using reserves. We just stuck to within our means as the community insisted we do and rightfully so. That $20 million in overall fiscal improvement in just one year, it's un unparalleled in our history. We invested in the community and we focused on the future. We came together and said, we're not going to just hunker down. We're going to hunker down, get busy, get everything we can done, and bring everybody together to focus on where do we go from here. And the city's done a good job of that. And one of the remarkable things we've done is we've purchased those lots on Chop and D Street to help move our public works yard over to that location, opening up a recreation opportunity. That was talked about, from my understanding, for more than 20 years. Finally came back on the market and in a time when buying is a good time, not necessarily selling, and we were able to pick that up. Only because of decisions that had been made earlier that provided the funding for that. Our recreation master plan is 
We expect it to improve service delivery and identify some real investment opportunities. We're nearing about three quarters of the way through the process. Some ideas are really starting to take shape. It's beginning to get pretty exciting. What we realize now is let's not build anything new till we figure out how to just deliver what we've got better. And this is a broad coalition of community partners that are helping on this master plan. It's going to be exciting when we announce all of the findings and what we're going to do with this plan and how we implement the service delivery better. I think the community is going to be very pleased that we're finally going to coordinate a very disjointed system. That would be a good outcome on its own. So another look at that table now. We realized that we had the rise and we had the recession. And what we had to do was make a course correction and transform the way we deliver government services. In 2011, 2012, those were the years of changing course cutting a tremendous amount of services. We were also trying to identify new revenue sources. Some people have said, well, how did you come up with ideas for new revenues? That was in this time period. In early 2011 was when the idea of parking meters came up. Other ideas on a vacation home rental, we put an auditor in the budget, not really sure if that would work. It came from the community member's idea that said, you are leaving money on the table. $75,000 this year they've been able to achieve an additional revenue that we hadn't had before. Throughout the years of course corrections, uh, the organization itself was struggling to make sure how it was going to adapt and transform and still deliver what the community expects. So in 2013 and 2014, we've stabilized. We still have an economic future that is uncertain. We're still not sure how it's going to work out, but we're on the right track with a positive cash flow. On city expenses in 13 and 14, I've been hammering home the issue that while we've made a lot of progress, we still have a ways to go, and particularly on this retiree health. My Regret is that I wish somebody would have thought about that 30 years ago when they were looking at retiree health. It's unsustainable. I realize people want to have free medical care for the rest of their life. I realize that, and they have made relied on the idea that that would be there. It's not sustainable. We have to change it. The employees have been extremely great partners. That's just amazing that we have employees that say, I want to work on solutions. We've implemented step one. There's a couple of new ideas out there right now to maybe solve this problem, and I, I certainly would uh, think that that would be a good goal to have. We've purchased the property, we've maintained our reserves, and we're investing over $30 million between 2013 and 14 in the community on capital. That's a pretty big change. 2002, we thought this would not end. We were going to ride that somewhere. Everybody got a rude awakening, the whole world, in 07, 08, 09, 10, people trying to recover. You did the right thing. You changed course and said, we can't just recover, can't just bleed our reserves dry back to zero. You could have done that. Decided instead, we're going to hold on to the reserves, make the tough call. You faced a lot of people who were in here at the podium, some crying, some very worried. And we cannot forget the impact on their lives. Some of them no longer live here. And they've had to leave to help balance this budget. By changing course, we've been able to stabilize the organization, and this community is well served because of it. They now have a city that's living within its means, doing exactly what the survey said. Don't come to us till you first fix your problem. Now, we've fixed the fiscal problem for now. I just caution that we don't know. It's still tenuous. Any one thing, a different direction, could tip us right back to where we were. We have to be careful and prudent. These decisions did not come lightly. We had workshops. You remember the community meeting where we asked the community to come together and hold an economic forum on a different tactic just from our fiscal side. When Tony was here, uh, late 2010, early 2011, that's actually where the idea on the parking meters came from, that meeting where what are other ideas? The vacation home rental idea came there. Reorganizing the departments came from there. Lots of good ideas that helped set us on the course. We didn't get here by ourselves. We got here with everybody coming together to solve this problem, and it's quite remarkable. Just taking a quick look at our general fund reserve, that is something of always great concern to council and 
the staff, and we want to maintain that 25%. There's been some discussion. Is that the right number? We went through the Great Recession uh, with 25% reserves. We were able to maintain that. So is it now the time to dip into that if we're going to invest in some of our key industry like recreation? Well, we just need to take a quick look back. Had you not had the policy in 2003 to start on the path that happened to capture a really good boom, boom years, you wouldn't have this discussion. If you didn't have reserves that were able to get you through that time, we wouldn't have been providing basic services. And that's sobering. So when you consider these policies, consider them wisely. And again, in looking back to just 1991 or two, it was down to 20% from a high of 50% in the late 70s. So those reserves are what people have used to implement new ideas, maybe infrastructure, balance the budget, provide more services. Be careful, be wise in the decisions you make. They can disappear quickly. So how do we know good decisions were made? Well, sometimes you don't know. You make the decision. I, I remember some of the conversations we had when the room was full of employees and their families. You're hoping it's the right decision. You don't know. The, the revenues were falling so fast, and these were significant amount of cuts. We were completely changing the organization, as I say, transforming it. And the decisions at the time were, I sure hope it's the right one, because I'm changing people's lives. This isn't a minor decision. This was lives changed. Well, the evidence is in the budget. Last year, we had a positive cash flow of $650,000, and that money has been directed to the Harrison Avenue project. Why? Because we've allowed those property owners who are partnering with us in a remarkable public-private partnership 20 years to pay their partnership. So we need to front load their portion. This $650,000, along with 100, 125, whatever you come out of the Linear Park project with, and some recommendations from this staff report, will help close that gap and make sure that the private properties do have their 20 years to pay their portion. But we wouldn't have that if we had not had a positive cash flow. Uh, in 2013, we're talking to you today about a $1.2 million positive cash flow, second year in a row. We're definitely on the right track. And again, 2013, a $20 million benefit to this community, unparalleled. $14.5 million simply by changing the way we administer retiree health benefits for those 65 and over. Now we want to tackle those others from 50. Well, I don't want to tackle them. I just want to tackle the issue, right? From 50 to 64 and those who anticipate in retiring. We've got to solve that problem. Four million on redevelopment, over a million in budget savings, the vacation home rental, retiree health benefit. We have employees all over this organization who get recognized and rewarded for the things they do to help solve expense problems or find revenues. Like the vacation home rental, we just recognized all her efforts the other day. And so we have a million two in positive cash flow. We recommended in October that $349,000 we anticipated, we knew there would be a positive cash flow, go to projects and programs currently underway. And that includes the Recreation Master Plan. We're contributing nearly 100000 to that project. 334122 we recommend being reserved for this policy discussion we're going to have on February 10th, public workshop on the fiscal future and fiscal policies of the city. We are projecting some additional anticipated revenue this year, over a few hundred thousand dollars. We don't know the numbers yet. Just as we've seen, we're on the right track, so we anticipate some savings. So there's opportunity for the first time in a long time about where to invest in this community. In the budget message this year, I suggested you got to go to the community first. There's a lot of infrastructure for maintenance. You're going to hear from all of our staff sitting here to my right about all of the needs they have in their departments. There's a significant um, public works and public uh, assets, capital asset maintenance that we need. At the same time, because of the parking issues going on, there may be an opportunity where we need to save those funds and set them aside in, in case you decide to eliminate the parking meters. We were going to have that discussion and we'll be having it in the next few weeks, but what we know right now is to terminate the program today would put about a $600,000 hole in the budget. That comes from the revenue anticipated minus the expenses and the 200000 we owe on the kiosks, 191 actually. 
So that may be, we need, may need to save that for that discussion. Provides you an opportunity though to have that discussion and you wouldn't have had it had you not made the decision to create the positive cash flow. $250,000 recommend being set aside for the Harrison Avenue project again that will close the gap on pre-funding the private property owner's participation. And $250,000 for a one-time 2% salary adjustment to all permanent full-time employees and $250 for part-time seasonal employees. This, I'm proud of this one. These employees are the ones who have stepped up and said, we'll be your partners. We don't know what's in our future. We don't know what we're going to hold. But currently today, every single employee working here is contributing to the positive cash flow to the tune of over $1.5 million. That's in the contributions they pay out of their paycheck. That's significant. We wouldn't have our positive cash flow without it. In addition, I know that they're seeking raises, um, but I wish this could be a raise and that it could be something 2%, very modest raise for all they've done, but we don't know what our future is. And so one-time money's become available, a one-time salary adjustment, and then putting them right back to their current salary is fair, and it's fair recognition of what they've achieved. Long-term salary increases, unlike some of our fellow public agencies that are doing that again, I caution that. You have to go slow. I don't know the economic future. Unfortunately, none of us do. I do want to recognize our employees. You know, this year we gave out a lot of uh, fabulous awards because we have finally a team that is an amazing team. We recognized outstanding leaders in our organization like Jim Marino, um, Kim George, Andra Berman. They all received a leadership award this year recognizing their outstanding achievement and how they lead their teams and the attitude they demonstrate. We recognized innovation and creativity in their jobs to our Development Services Director, Hilary Roberud, for the new idea on the Permit Center and how that's going to innovate how permits are processed, and Sergeant Adler for the new K-9 dog park. And we also did an, another award that was simply, you couldn't not do it. It was for Public Service Spirit Award, and that was to our firefighter, Justin Keyes. He didn't just go to a fire and put out the fence that burned down to this woman and her family, but instead realized she had no means to rebuild it, took a fr bunch of friends from Heavenly, and went back and built that fence for her. That is absolutely an effort in public service that's commendable. Those employees are recognize themselves as a team. They come together and share a lot in the rewards of what they've achieved and they face the hard realities of our budget. Uh, and it's with that that we recommend a 2% one time. The city, however, is still in transition. I recently wrote this message that we must take a different approach than in previous years. That's why we look back. By implementing a sustainable strategy that best serves the entire community, this new approach would recognize our most important mission, which is to invest in the community. We must rebuild, restore, revitalize, and reinvest in our primary industry recreation and use the return on those investments to strengthen core services economic development, partnership development, improving the environment, um, our built environment and infrastructure. Those efforts will help us achieve fiscal sustainability, and I'll highlight just a few. We recognize that a robust economy is what is going to generate revenues. We are going after little bits of revenue here and there. That was Those decisions were made at a time when that was very important. But really what's going to rise the budget in the city that we can invest in infrastructure is a robust economy. We can do some of that with maybe less regulation. Staff is working on revamping the entire city code, and you're going to see the city attorney's office bring to you in the next coming months, taking those 36 chapters that are very confusing, heavily regulatory, and very difficult, down to nine. We want to streamline this. We're going to get out to the business community and ask them, what is it about our regulations that prevents you from succeeding? Tell me what that is. And we'll bring back every single code recommendation that makes sense, that's not a violation of law or something like that. We'll hold community workshops and try to engage them. And this is the time we've transformed our organization. We're, we're lean. We're sort of lean, mean fighting machine right now. We're working on threads, but we've got to get out of the way of business if they're going to succeed. And being heavily regulatory from our end in areas where maybe we don't need to uh, is an opportunity to become more business friendly. 
Hillary is launching some workshops already. We're doing the outdoor display workshop January 20, 30th, January 30th. Uh, that's one of the first workshops. We have a housing element workshop coming up as well, the 23rd. And we have an airport master planning workshop on February 13. We want to take a look at our airport and say, what do you want us to do with this airport, commercial service or not? How about restoring our partnership development? We've been working really hard on that. We want to see an engaged community. They're engaged right now on a single issue. That's good to see that they want to have their voice and their expression given to you. What else? We want to engage them on everything, on how we can really know that we're delivering the service they want. Improving our built environment infrastructure. Ray Jarvis and his team are taking a look at our entire infrastructure and going to bring to you on the February 10th workshop as much information as we can to let you know the kind of many millions of dollars in delayed maintenance and deferred infrastructure improvements that we need, including a look at our five-year capital update. These issues, along with our continual prudent focus on fiscal responsibility, will help ensure that we stay the course. So 2014 is a year of looking forward. We have transformed from structural deficits. Today, the city is more efficient and does operate within its means. It's a good message to the community that we heard them and we took some real hard decisions to make that happen. Our financial policy discussion on February 10th, I think this is very important. We can learn from the past that without clear direction on policies, we tend to be pay as you go, What's in front of you? Let's take care of that. Another issue comes up and being very reactive rather than prudent and more forward looking, more responsive, but still fiscally responsible. One way to do that is to take a look at all of your financial policies and develop a plan of action. How much as revenues increase should you invest in the community? And whatever that means, and if it's infrastructure, streets, roads, or a business assistance, or capital, capital outlay. In addition, maintaining and improving the facilities has never been an asset management plan to do so and we want to bring that to you. We also want to take a look at those reserves. We've talked at the budget message that there's an opportunity and also a need to maybe put some reserves aside for the fluctuations and PERS that we're going to be seeing happening as they've changed their policies. And of course our Parks Trails Master Plan airport plan, the business friendly initiative I just mentioned, and our community partnerships will be enhanced if we implement this direction. So in conclusion, the city's fiscal outlook is improved. Of course, the economic forecast does remain un uncertain. Throughout the country, the economists are still, everyone's teetering, it could go any which way with too much of a, a change in a different direction that might happen in the economy. It's uncertain. Reviewing our past practices and budget decisions provides some learning opportunities. I look back on all these decisions to say it was a growth and a cutback and a growth and a cutback. That's very hard. People who have worked over this city 25, 30 years have been through all of that. It's time to stop that. And just, this is our organization. This is how we're efficient. We know we have to plug a couple of holes that can help the community so we can deliver a better service to them. But let's not just create services because they're interesting or exciting. They must have a reason that benefits the community. So we don't end up because clearly the past has shown we will be through another recession and we will come to a time if we have prudently reserved to address those at the time we will not have to have the highs and the swings. Our unanticipated net fund, the city's current positive cash flow has resulted from difficult but important decisions and the current fund balance is recommended to be expended goes to capital and community investment, organizational and current projects. We're continuing transition and I support you in that effort. I know it's difficult. I know there's a lot of issues on our plate. We have to look at them holistically. Um, but I'm proud of being part of a great team and how we've been able to transform. When you look back from where we were just a few years ago, in 2010, just three years ago, was projecting every dollar of those fund balances is going to be spent if we don't do something. And you did. And that's how we got here. Every single decision led us to where we are today. Um, and with that, I submit the year-end fund balance to you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's all to them. All the employees.